times, after an hour of apathy, my strange and beautiful companion would take my hand and hold it with a fond pressure, renewed again and again, blushing softly, gazing in my face with languid and burning eyes, and breathing so fast that her dress rose and fell with the tumultuous respiration. It was like the ardor of a lover. It embarrassed me. It was hateful and yet overpowering, and with gloating eyes she drew me to her, and her hot lips traveled along my cheek in kisses, and she would whisper almost in sobs, You are mine. You shall be mine. You and I are one forever. So hi guys, welcome to another video by Reading Monstrosities, the channel dedicated to the review and discussion of transgressive and horror literature. So recently uh, my wife and I watched a movie uh, that was on Tubi called The Vampire Lovers. It was made in 1970, I believe, and it stars Ingrid Pitt. It, it's a gothic movie that takes place in the rural Austrian forest in a castle. Uh, a young girl lives remotely with her father, and she ends up befriending a young woman that they take in and are nursing back to health um, after, in, in the aftermath of a carriage crash. And the young woman is named Carmilla, and she happens to be a vampire. So we end up with this story of this kind of tumultuous and, and, and almost softcore <laughs> porny feel uh, to the movie. Um, and it ends up being a vampire love story. We watched the movie, it's incredibly 70s, uh, sort of a softcore porny feel to it, erotic horror is what it was, and um, I liked it. <laughs> but uh, after the end of the movie, uh, I realized that it was actually based on a gothic novel, and that novel is called Carmilla. Uh, by J. Sheridan Le Fanu, I believe is how you say the name. This is actually one of the very first gothic vampire novels ever written, and it predates Dracula by 25 years. So this was written originally back in 1872, uh, like I said, 25 years before Dracula. And uh, a lot of, uh, apparently if you could trust the internet, what I was reading is there is a lot of uh, vampire aspects of vampire lore that we've take almost as cliche now, that were actually invented by this guy. Now, the author, he was uh, born in Dublin. The movie The Vampire Lovers, it follows the plot of the novel fairly close. There are some differences, but uh, basically the main character, it's all, the book is all told from the perspective of a 19-year-old girl named Laura. And she is uh, basically making a testimony of an experience she had with another young woman named Carmilla. She lives out in the middle of the rural Austrian forest in a remote castle with her father. And they're out taking a walk one night when they witness a carriage crash in which a young woman named Carmilla is injured. And they end up taking her in and taking care of her in the castle. Now, Carmilla is a very strange girl with some peculiar habits, but Laura just can't help herself from being drawn to her. There's this attraction there. And it's, it, she goes, there's several pages dedicated to how pretty Carmilla is. As the uh, novel goes on, we end up learning that Carmilla is in fact a vampire. Um, no real spoiler alerts there. This is one of those kind of novels that it was written back in the 19th century. At the time, uh, it would have been very fresh and very, um, very new and very frightening. Uh, by today's standards, it uses all of the vampire motifs that we're used to. Um, but from a historical perspective, it is a very interesting read. So uh, no huge surprises, but the writing is great. If you love Gothic literature, if you love Gothic writing, uh, 19th century novels, this is definitely one to check out. What's really interesting about this novel is that it is unbelievably sapphic. It is lesbian to the core. Um, it's very clear that the main character, Laura and Carmilla, have this uh, deep bond, and it is really, um, it's really expressed very poetically throughout the book. Um, it's really easy to do a, a sapphic reading into this book. 
in fact, in one of the early chapters, um, Laura is describing a dream that she had when she was a little girl of a young woman crawling into bed with her and uh, holding her. And it was a real comforting dream until she felt the uh, sensation of two needles jabbing into her neck. Um, meaning a vampire, obviously. Um, but but she, she, she described the dream as soothing but terrifying at the same time. So you could easily see, see that as being a um, kind of symbolic of a sexual awakening. But she went years later when she meets Carmilla, Carmilla says that she had the same dream, only in this case it was Laura. So they use the fact that they both had the same dream as um, uh, a uh, sign that they are meant to be fast friends. And uh, reading the lesbian subtext, it's obvious there's more going on there. Still a better love story than Twilight, I'll say that. <laughs> but um, as I was reading it, I started wondering, considering the time period that it was written in, how would the lesbian aspects of the story be portrayed at the end? Um, I kind of had this worry that maybe because Carmilla is a vampire, that it, it would be sort of symbolic of like, you know, lesbianism as this vamp vampire power that's draining the life out of young girls. So I worried that there was going to be kind of an underlying homophobia as I was reading this book. But it actually, it wasn't. There is, at, at least in my interpretation, there was no point in the story where, like, Laura ever condemned Carmilla or called her a villain or a monster. The only people that end up calling Carmilla a monster are the men in the story. Her father, doctor, um, and, and the people who ultimately out her as a vampire. Um, but... In Laura's case, no. In fact, the very last chapter of this book has kind of a sort of melancholy feel where she is almost fondly remembering her time with Carmilla. She describes the, uh, the situation as terrifying, but Carmilla is still her beautiful, playful, really good friend. So um, it's, um, yeah, if you want to read some sapphic literature from the 19th century, this is definitely a book to check out. Now, anyone who's familiar with 19th century literature, Gothic literature, knows that the style of writing is a bit different than what we're used to these days. Um, the writing is a little more, uh, I guess, complicated, you could say. Um, the sentence structures are sometimes a little different. So even though this is a short book, it's just, you know, not much more than 100 pages, um, you might want to read it slowly make sure you pick up on everything because um, it is written a little bit different than the style that we're used to today but it is a great vampire novel early sapphic literature it has some great historical uh, relevance in the world of literature yeah so let me give you a little uh close-up there carmilla yeah great great novel Thank you for watching another video by Reading Monstrosities. Um, check out my other videos. Um, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And we'll see you for the next video.